that show. Starring Joan Rivers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's Joan. Good day. No, no. No, 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 no. Good day. Today, I only wish we were on smell a vision instead of television because we're doing a show on fragrances and perfumes. Isn't that going to be nice? And we have Robert Granitz with us, who is a vice president from what company? Charles, Charles of the Ritz. And we have Gina Rollins on, just because she's a great looking woman. So it should be a very interesting show. And um, I was thinking today, I was saying to myself, today we're going to discuss perfumes and fragrances. And I said to myself, what is a good perfume like? You know what a good perfume like is like? It's like, a, it's like a bad joke. Some smell more than others, you know? Oh, 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 no. Actually, ex don't bother, but that's very true. Actually, expensive perfume, expensive perfume, I should say, by the way, is something that many girls get to put on because they know what to take off. <laughs> mm, I wouldn't know. Actually, I, you know, I wear perfume all the time. I, oh, because I like to be a Lorraine. You know, I'm married four years. I'm still trying, you know? I never get into bed at night without putting perfume on the curlers and the cream. Always. <laughs> Even on my honeymoon, I said to Edgar, wait, I'm gonna go in the bathroom and put on channel number five. Mm. He said, television on the honeymoon? <laughs> he was so hurt. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Actually, though, after the, now, they have all kinds of perfumes out, which we're going to talk about. They have a perfume app now that is made of Plathomate. Yes, sir, Plathomate. <laughs> For women that want to get more out of their husbands, you know? And, um, <laughs> also, moving along in this pathetic monologue, also, actually, the name of a perfume is very important. You know this, right? Yeah. Right? A perfume should have a sexy name. Like, take white shoulders. Wild, sexy name, right? You'd go out and buy it. If it was called dandruff, you wouldn't touch it, would you? <laughs> <laughs> would you? Would you? Would you? <laughs> Edgar. Edgar checked out on perfume, and he said that perfume is very important. It should really represent you. So he made for my birthday, he made some perfume at home in the kitchen. And, it, you know, he gave it to me. I said, it smells funny. He said so. But, um, <laughs> didn't work at all. I phrased that wrong. I said to him, listen. Listen, I said, just like this. I said, listen. That's why my marriage is so happy. I said, listen, Edgar. Don't you give me any perfume. Give me the money. I'll decide. So he gives me 10 bucks. 10 bucks, the guy's a sport. You have it, you spend it, you know? He said to me, are you going to go out and buy one bottle of perfume for that $10? I said, no. <laughs> I'm going to go out and buy six bottles of perfume. Cheap perfume. He said, cheap perfume? Cheap perfume? Why would you rather have six bottles of cheap perfume rather than one bottle of expensive perfume? I said, I don't know. It just seems to make more sense to me. <laughs> Today, to discuss fragrances and perfumes and what makes one expensive and what makes one cheap and what makes a good perfume good, we have with us the vice president and general manager of Charles of the Brits, and they are now making a whole series of perfumes, which is called Ritual. And his name is Robert Granitz, and you smell great. You smell good, too. Oh, you smell wonderful. I know what it is, too. And I'm not going to mention it. And Speaking of expensive perfume. It is expensive. Yes, expensive. oh, yes. yes. It's expensive. And the next lady, we have to find out what her perfume is, if she wears it at all. She's currently starring in a marvelous movie called Faces, which has been nominated for three Academy Awards. And in private life, she's married to John Cassavetes, and her name is Gina Rowlands. Can we call you John? You can call me Bob, because that's my name. All right, then why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter. It's a small show. It's a great show. But that's, do you wear perfume? <laughs> yes, I do. Um, I don't have any on at all today. Oh, that's a smart In girl. Honor it's a very smart girl. That's very nice. Yes. But what, what kind do you wear? Perfume or cologne? I wear, uh, I usually wear floral scents. I like a heavy scent. And I like to wear very little of a heavy scent rather than a lavish amount. Of does your husband like you in fragrance? Yes, he does. Does it make any difference to him whether you wear it or don't? I you never wear it at ask night? him, but I always wear it. So at I night before you go to bed? My wife always puts it on at night. I always, put, yes, I, do, I take a bath, to bed. and you put on the deodorant automatically and squirt, 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 squirt. Yeah, it's great. And then the face cream Makes and the toilet difference. paper with the clippies. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. <laughs> you who, honey? You go to bed like that? I go to bed like that now because I'm married four not. years. 
Oh, yeah. And you already go to bed that I night? already have oh. a kid. Don't worry. That's a... <laughs> Do you know how... I wouldn't tell you how many years I've been married. My wife has never done that to me. That's we have three kids. Yeah. Oh, right. See what you got to do with I have to talk to your wife later. <laughs> Please don't. No. Perfectly, I think... Should a woman, Bob, wear always the same scent? Never. You know why? Because she gets tired of it. And then she comes back to us and she says, it doesn't smell anymore. It's the wrong bottle. She brings it back to us and she says, I want my money back. Okay. It's all wrong because after a while, you can't smell it. Everybody else can smell it. Yeah, I, can have, I can't smell my perfume ever. I can smell it right now. Yeah, well, I, I know what it is. Uh, I'm not it. even going to tell you. Uh, why should I talk about a competitor? Yeah, we're going to mention names. Oh, know? are we? All right, it's Joy, it's isn't joy it? For, yeah, it's I joy. always wear it. I know. But not, yeah, very expensive. Uh, that's not why I wear it, though. It's a why? very lovely smell. It's a lovely smell. I went into a taxi once. And the guy said to me, mm, I smell lilacs. But he doesn't. No, he smelled my perfume. I figured, yeah. okay, honey, that's it. For, for that Turn amount of meter. money, it's not lilacs. For that. No, believe me. What you know you... what it is? It's the two most expensive things in the whole fragrance business. What? Jasmine and rose. Could we make... I have that all here. So in other I words... can't make it here, but I have it here. Want to see this? Yes. What is this? This is a little vial of rose absolu. It's Bulgarian rose. It does open. I'd rather not do it if Let I me, could. Let me, can you get a shot? Yeah. yeah. It's... Isn't that beautiful? Now, this is the absolute essence. Now, to make this particular rose absolute, it would take a shipload full of rose petals to make one pound, one pound of robes as absolute, and that would cost somewhere in the neighborhood mm. of $2,000 for one pound. And, that's, and the other thing that's in the fragrance you wear is jasmine. Which is also expensive. And jasmine would do the same. See this? Don't drop it. It's $85 right there, please. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. And that's why it's in that uh, nice little container. The, uh, other, the other fragrance down. you're wearing is jasmine. And this is a very interesting thing because jasmine has to be picked at the break of dawn. You can't pick it later Are in the day. Are you kidding? I'm not advertising that. Oh, I am not an advertiser. Oh, for heaven's sake, no. No, it <laughs> has to be picked at the crack of dawn when the dew is still on the petals. And if you pick it, you After remember, that time. you remember jasmine at night, if you think about sure, it. Night you smell jasmine. Night, of it's when it get, lies so heavy on the air. Yes, but it's I never would think that the perfume guy is going to run out and, you know, in the <laughs> Who's that? They're cuckoo dedicated. That what do you mean? What do you, what do you <laughs> 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 Mr. Stones are picking, you know, jasmine. Oh, you're jasmine. kidding. Men don't pick these flowers. Women who pick the flowers. But that's Men, great. Lots of women. That may, now, from now on, I'll, I'll look at perfume in a different way. Yeah, now, what do you wear, Gina? What, what's I wear, I change. I wear a different, usually a floral scent. I have worn Joy. I've worn. Uh, I've worn most of the, the true floral scents, but I change them because, uh, as you say, I can't smell them after a little while, and then I can't judge how much I put on. And one of my pet peeves is that people scent themselves too heavily. But that's like again, you don't know it. No, but all women do that. Do you know they do that with everything? They always well, use too much. I must say, men are doing it too with their yes. aftershave there. Oh, no, yes. No, 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 oh, no. yes. Men no, walk into a not. room now and it's pew, pew. Not because it's too much. <laughs> not because it's too much. Well, you smell perfect. Yeah, but that's because I'm not wearing anything. <laughs> <laughs> the vice it's president only because, of Charles. It's Lawrence. only because we don't make one. Have me back on the show in August. I'll smell like the devil. All right. All right. <laughs> How do you know when enough is enough? Well, you know when enough is enough if you don't drown yourself in it. Any, any fragrance, three or four squirts, it's enough. Now, it all depends. What do you want to wear? Do you want to wear cologne? Do you want to wear toilet water? Do you want to wear perfume? Which do you wear, James? What do you wear, James? Well, I wear, I wear all of them at different times. But at night, I wear a perfume. And uh, in the daytime, frankly, I usually use a uh, scented uh, body lotion. A body lotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes cologne in the summer. Yeah, well, you see, there's a way to do this if you, if you don't want to smell that loud, and most women don't. I, I take that back. As a matter of fact, there are two, ki two types of women. There's a type of woman who does that want to smell... That you marry and a type of woman that you don't. Oh, it's your only... Uh, what about the one in between? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I don't know the other kind. I've been married 25 years. You look uh, very good for it. Uh, it's pretty good. It good, takes good care of me. Wears perfume every night and no curlies. Anyway, this, th there, there are two types of women. There are the women who really want to walk into a room. They want everybody to know that, by golly, they're wearing it. That's like the woman who doesn't even want to wear a, a fur coat unless the label shows. Yeah. Right? Now, the other kind of woman really knows what fragrance is. It's an accessory, and just as she wouldn't wear 15 kinds of earrings on the same ear, maybe she would today, I don't know with all the chains and all that nonsense. But um, she doesn't wear that much, and she knows how to do it. Now, a woman like this will 
use the same fragrance right on through a whole ritual. She will begin with her bath, she will go on with a dusting powder or a body lotion, and she will wear a cologne, and maybe she'll put a drop of perfume on here or here or uh, one great way. Incidentally, did you know about the, the cotton bit with perfume? Great thing, great thing. Best way, the most economical way to use perfume. You put a drop or two on a little bit, pad of cotton and then here. I Not me. But I do that. I do that with this. You carry it. I carry it. But in you can't there smell sometime. it. In there sometimes. Yes, yeah. I can. can. you smell it when it's there? When it with the cotton? Hmm? Sure. But you see, you're you're. You take cotton and just tuck it in your bra. Yes, you just you tuck it in your bra. I like it. No, no. I uh, like to put it. In. I would take a big <laughs> ball of cotton. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well help yourself. <laughs> We'll be right back after this commercial. It comes so well. We're back talking with Robert Granitz, Vice President Charles Loritz, and Gina Rowland, starring in the Academy Award nominated Faces. Tell me, why are some perfumes very expensive and others very cheap? What makes well, what, what, the a cheap perfume still smell good? Well, that all depends upon what you call smelling good. Generally speaking, uh, what makes a cheap perfume cheap and uh, an expensive perfume expensive is the ingredients that go into it. It's as simple as that. But yet you can get, they're like $1.95 perfumes or colognes, whatever you want to call okay. them, that you get in the summer, like hot weather colognes that smell just lovely. Absolutely, but they won't. Well, I don't really want to get involved in that. If all I, right. Except to, to give you one analogy here. Uh, you, if you wanted to go drive, let's say, out to the Hamptons in the summertime, and you wanted to go out, you could go out in a Volkswagen, let's say. And it'll get you there, right? Same ingredients, basic ingredients go into that Volkswagen. Let's go into a Lincoln Continental. Which do you want to go in? Who's Air in which car? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the Continental. Uh, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> but basi basically, this, this is really what it was. Now... If you get Rose Absolute, which is Bulgarian Rose, and it costs uh, $2,000 a pound, that's one of the basic ingredients. If Jasmine costs $2,000 a pound, that's another basic ingredient. There's no way that you can really lessen the cost of that. And then you have finer perfumes are aged longer, which it's like whiskey. You have to put them away and let them age. What? How do you make? Could you make a perfume? Could you show Gina and me how to make a perfume? Well, I could begin. All right. I could begin. Show us okay. what goes into these things. All right, I'll show you. Here you've got... This is called patchouli. Now, these are leaves, and patchouli comes from the Far East. So I could take one of these leaves, or a root, and patchouli is, uh, it's really a, one of the sexier uh, kinds of oils that we use. So we take some of that. Is it a flower? Uh, it's a root. a root. It's a root. A root. And we can take here, these are lavender flowers. They're really flowers. Really? Really? Not yes, yeah. They really are, you see. Yes. Now, I can take some lavender here. Now, what the lavender is going to do to the patchouli is that it's going to give it a kind of a bite and um, a top note to it. Could you I see? just take the lavender and just put it in my underwear, though? And set yes, my as, a that as a matter of fact, that's the way a lot of this began. Did, did you ever, you, you know about people who have little potpourri bowls around yes. the room? Well, lavender was the first thing that was ever used in potpourri bowls. Yes, but and I've was, tried those potpourri bowls and they go funny on you. Well, do again. They? Yes, they do, and I don't understand it because my grandmother used to have a beautiful smell. Uh, but you see, here uh, you get right back to the original question what makes an expensive perfume expensive and a cheap one cheap? And I won't go into it any more so than that. So, what should she put into if she wanted to make a potpourri bowl? Well, she could take dried flowers, her own dried flowers, and put them in, and she could make her own potpourri ball. It'd be a little hard to find today, but you could do it. And, uh, you know, lavender originally was used uh, as a deodorant and a room deodorant. I was trying to find uh, some other stuff here. Uh, to put in. Now, yeah. this is called musk ambrette. Now, I don't know whether you know what musk is or not, but it's uh, an animal substance. And uh, any sexy fragrance, any heavy fragrance or uh, extremely feminine fragrance that you talk about will have musk in it. This gives it that Is that the whale? No, that no. That they're always talking about? No, no, musk comes from an animal. The whale is over here. You have to kill a whale uh, no, so that I can look one. nice and smell good? You don't kill the whale. This is called ambergris. Smell it, Gina. Does it smell? It smells. No smell. Yeah. You can't smell it has no smell at all. This comes from the whale. And this, this... Uh, that whale was obviously single. This, this... <laughs> uh, wrong, wrong part of the whale. Wrong part of the whale. I don't want to go into it. 
You don't want to talk about cheap and expensive. I don't want to discuss parts of Wales. Go ahead. Anyway, this, this, uh, was, this is found floating in the ocean. And many of the uh, old whaling captains who found this floating in the ocean, there would be 165, 175 pounds of this. And they made all kinds of money, and they came home back to Nantucket, and they didn't go whaling anymore because they had all this money. Now, you take some of this, and you grind that up in here. May I ask you something? Yeah. Don't they use a lot of... Now, these are all genuine things you're putting in. They're these no, are all... No yeah. fake, nothing. Now, in an inexpensive perfume, can they put in fake things instead of using all this? You mean uh, synthetic, made synthetic. in a laboratory? Yes, they can, and sometimes they do. Actually, uh, one of the great breakthroughs that was ever made in the perfume business was made um, in the, the 1920s when the discovery of the aldehydes was made. Now, this is a synthetic. Yeah, I hate to use the word synthetic because people think it's cheap. It isn't that at all. It's simply that it's made in a laboratory rather than comes from a natural flower. And uh, this is the basis of the so-called modern blends, like uh, an arpege, for example has an aldehyde in it, and it gives it. It would never have been possible before 1922, say. And remember, the perfumes have been made since, well, we know, 5,000 years. We know that. Isn't that... But they oh, used why, to use... Well, go ahead, Gina. Why do you, what, what is the ambergris for if, uh, if it has no scent? The ambergris is a fixative. And a fixative simply means that it holds the fragrance uh, that is created. All right, what else goes in next? Well, we could put in some vetiver root. Okay. Now, this really is, this really is a root, and it's a root of grass, and it's found, again, in the Near East. Mm -hmm. It has kind of a lemony fragrance on its own. You can smell it. Mm, nice. Take a whiff. No, it's lemon. Oh, you, uh, you, she, she doesn't like lemon. No good. Can I ask you, while you're making the perfume, do you use bath oils too, Gina, and things yes. like that? Yes, at different times, though, yeah. not, not always. Um, do you use the same scent from the outside up? No, really, I just switch around an awful lot. Yeah, yeah, I do, too. I mean, like, my bath oil doesn't match my powder, which doesn't ma which is wrong, then, isn't it's it? It's all wrong, certainly. So I come out smelling like, like going gypsy to camp. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like going to three different kinds of doctors for the same disease. Yeah, yeah. What do you want to do that for? Do I know? The I gifts. Know. I know. <laughs> Take it back and get them all the same. Now, yeah. what are you doing now, Bob? You're, you're now, what I'm doing now, I'm showing in a very simple form how we go about creating a perfume. Because, for example, we have a fragrance which has 153 different products in it. Now, these are, this is just a small sample of all the things that are in uh, one of the fragrances that we make. And what you do is you put them all together and you have to balance them very carefully to make sure you get exactly the right kind of balance. And then when it's all done, then you have to add some kind of volatile ingredient to make, it. to make it into a perfume itself. See, all I'm doing is mixing dry ingredients here. It's like baking a cake, really. Yeah. And what are you going to put in to make it? Well, I'm not going to put anything in because I don't have it with me. Okay. But I could if I'd had it with And the reason for that is that um, uh, we, were, we were afraid of, of the lights and the effect of the lights on uh, that ingredient itself. I you, think it's better that I don't do it. You well, could, I was going to... You're going to spot our whole audience 10 <laughs> yeah. years from now. Just, what, what do you mean, afraid that, of it losing its scent or it has a volatile quality? It's volatile. That, uh, and is, under uh, this kind of hot light, uh, the volatility might not be the smartest thing in the world. Really? You see, you have to remember that perfumes are made under absolute laboratory conditions. And here again, you come into the difference between a, um, a cheap perfume as you, or an inexpensive perfume and an expensive one. And uh, these things are, it's like being in a chemistry laboratory or a, uh, a drug laboratory or whatever. Everything is very sterilized. And is everything very secretive? I read somewhere like the 10 most, uh, I don't know, the finest perfumes they call them in the world, you know, as far as fragrance goes, that they keep the formulas. Do you know about Oh, it this? goes even you worse. Know, it's I've real cloak and dagger it, stuff. I'm not sure. Did you know it's that? I, we, we know of one fragrance where... There are two sets of formulas, and only one person knows the one set, and the other knows the other. And the two have to be put together before you get the perfume. A double right? blind. Yes, it's, a, it's incredible. We'll be back to find out what Charles Loritz really puts in his things <laughs> after this message, so don't go away. We're back talking with Robert Granis and Gina Rowland, star Goodness. of Faces. Gina... When you buy a perfume, are you ever attract? What do you attract to first? The name or the shape of the bottle? What? No, I, I I really look for a true flower scent, which you would think, well, that's the easiest thing to get in the world, but it's not. There are always so many other things thrown into them. 
that uh, I really like to smell like a night blooming jasmine or, <laughs> yes. or a honeysuckle you are, you are a or, or something <laughs> like that. I, I love that. Or tube rose or any of those those uh, heavy, lovely romantic smells. So I just keep smelling until I find one. What about this now, is this a typical thing that a woman wants or is she unusual wanting that kind of a smell, Bob? Well, no, I, I think uh, most women, strangely enough, really want to smell loud. Now, that's a horrible thing Why don't you look at me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think, well, basically what they want is a perfume should smell. And uh, I think that this is a matter of exposure and sophistication and uh, getting on with it. Of course, uh, there's sort of a funny thing about that because uh, <coughs> perfume should be part of a woman's life. And the beautiful thing about perfumes is that this is one way that a woman can be right up to the very minute in fashion. For example, she may not be able to buy an Yves Saint Laurent dress, but she can buy Yves Saint Laurent perfume. And she's but what if it doesn't something. smell nice? Well, if it doesn't smell nice, she should, to her, she shouldn't yeah. wear it at all. Unfortunately, what she does is she goes up to a bridge party or a mahjong thing and she's up somewhere and she says, oh, that smells great. What is it? Oh, I must go get some. And she gets it home. I don't like it. Why does it sm Do you ever do that? Like you smell some perfume that you put it on you, Gina, and it doesn't smell right? Well, uh, I surely I've tried some. Everything that my mother, for example, puts on, her fragrances take on a very lovely That's scent. That's the body chemistry. And the body uh, chemistry. Yes. I've tried several of her things that, that didn't work the same mm. on me at all. So in other words, in every woman yeah. it smells no, differently? No two fragrances smell, no, no two women wear the same fragrance the same way. It always smells different because it's the body chemistry. There are times in a woman's life, days of the month, when her perfume will smell differently. I oh. think someone so else's perfume always smells better. I think somebody else's perfume always <laughs> smells better too. And on that happy else? note, <laughs> I want to thank Robert Grant. It's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. So nice to have you on. And Gina Rollins, a pleasure. Just thank a pleasure. You. Good luck with the Academy Awards. <laughs>